How you been? What's been going on? It's podcast night in America. Not football night. Podcast night in America. It's very nice to be able to talk to you all tonight. I got a couple things I wanted to say. A couple things I wanted to share. Wrote out a list, in fact. Because I do that sometimes when I want to be a little bit more organized. You ever done that? You ever written out a list? These are the things I want to accomplish today. These are the things I want to do today. You know, you read books. Listen to people like Tony Robbins tell you. If you write your stuff down, you're more likely to get more things accomplished. Maybe I ought to do that every day. I don't. I write down what I want to get accomplished when it's podcast time. On my day-to-day activities, I don't write anything down. Maybe I'll start. I don't want Tony Robbins thinking I'm a failure. What the hell? Where did that come from? (laughs) Mr. Robbins, um, I know you don't listen. I'm going to adjust my little mic. I'm wearing a microphone like you do on stage. Let me adjust this a little bit. It's going to make a little noise. There we go. I've noticed if you put the microphone right in front of your face, uh, you'll either hear the breath hit it, or, you know, it'll make noises. John Tyler coming at you tonight, pre-recorded from the apartments in Houston, Texas, Princess Podcast. Today's date is the 20th of April of the year 2016. <clears throat> Wanted to say hello to everybody. Catch y'all up on what's been going on. And just say hello to the princess. She's She's been so sweet, hasn't she? She's been really, really good and, and really um, patient. I read that somewhere. Love is patient. I read that somewhere once. Hope that's true. But basically what I did was I I sat down and uh, if you've been reading the blog at uh, Princess Blog, I'm sorry, so many websites I don't even get them right sometimes. PinnacleCreative.net is where I actually put the blog post, but you can also visit my, this podcast, um, all the previous episodes of this podcast at ThePrincessBlog.net. This is from PinnacleCreative.net, which is where I host my blog. And what I did was I uh, wrote out some things that I wanted to touch upon tonight. And um, the first one, I just want to reach out to the princess. She's not. She's she's nuts. I'm sorry. That's not what this says. This says, the princess is so gorgeous, I'm nuts. Let's get that right. I'm nuts. She's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful in every way. She's so beautiful until it makes me stupid. Whenever I look at her, it makes me crazy because she's very, very beautiful and very, very sweet. Baby, do you remember whenever we first, when we first saw each other, first experienced each other for the first time? It's very, very special, wasn't it? It's very, very nice. And it seems like we, it seems like they never stopped. The love never stopped. Isn't that weird? Not weird. That isn't weird. That's what everybody wants. That's what everybody wants, baby. Everybody wants what we have. Love that never stops. Doesn't mean we'll never have a, you know, problem. Probably not. I mean, you know, most couples do. But if we've made it this long and this far, what could stand in the way of us? Nothing. It's because you're so, I'm so crazy about you. It makes me crazy. Because I, all I want to do is... Sometimes I've thought over the past 
several several years I thought okay you gotta stop you gotta you gotta stop and that works for about two hours and then I'm thinking about you again because you're so beautiful it makes me crazy really crazy but you know why it's because you're so beautiful and because you're so sweet and you didn't really know how to reach out to me in a very special way you did it was very special very special and that's what I love about us is how, how it just goes on and on and on and even if I tried over the years even if I've tried to stop thinking about you it doesn't work you know why we're supposed to be together I like that part so I've number one on the list the princess is so gorgeous I'm nuts I've already talked about that I want to talk to you a little bit about being an entrepreneur I don't know what's going on look I can't speak to you I know there's some people that listen to this podcast outside the United States and I don't know what's going on out there but in the in the States um, Basically, I'm starting to think that if we could legalize slavery again, there is a large section of the business community that would go ahead and do that. Um, look, I, I'm not one of these people that, uh, look, I think business people, business owners need to be able to, to run their businesses and hire people and have that person do a, way, a job and you pay them a wage and, you know, I believe in all that, but I think what I'm learning more and more is there's something inside of me that likes the freedom. Can we talk a little bit about freedom? And it isn't so much about money. I mean, you can have a, a small business that just starts out and you're not making a lot of money. But the freedom... <laughs> I mean, you can't put, uh, you really can't put a price tag on that. I have been thinking about going back to work for an employer, at least on a part-time basis. And if you'll listen a little longer in the, in the um, podcast, I'd like to, to give an opportunity to some people to, to really get some extra exposure. Because that's what I'm all about. See, I'm a leader. I want to work for a leader, not a boss. How many of you know that the bosses are the people that act important and go have meetings right before something fucked up happens at work. I, I want to I work for leaders. I want to work for leaders. I've decided that. I want to work for leaders, not bosses. I don't like bosses. Now, that doesn't mean I have a problem with authority. I'm not, don't misinterpret that. Well, John, you're going to come to work for me. I'm, I'm, you know, they, they put me in charge. I gotta, that's fine. That's fine. But I guarantee you, you're going to be a leader if I report to you. <laughs> I love that. That was strong. That was strong. But the importance of thinking like an entrepreneur. When you go into a store and you see something on sale, I want you to stop thinking about how much money you're saving. I want you to start thinking about how much money you can make. Train your mind to think differently. I think it was Thomas Edison or one of those f famous people from back then where they wore white wigs that said, a penny saved is a penny earned. It's true. You ever reached down and picked up a penny off the concrete? I used to not do that. I think that's just a fucking penny or that's a dime. Why would I bend down and pick that up? I'll tell you why you picked that up. Because a hundred of those pennies makes one dollar. When I figured that out, I started picking up those pennies on the floor. I don't want to see any more pennies on the freaking concrete. A hundred of those makes one dollar. Start picking them up. But you got to start thinking like an entrepreneur. we got to start thinking about how we not we, we, we don't want somebody else's agenda or somebody else's whim or somebody else's ability to make a profit, which we all support. We want people to make a profit. 
money-making businesses is wonderful. It's what drives the economy, and it's what sets America apart. It's why people die coming over on little boats from Cuba, you know, will risk their lives for freedom over here because they want a better life. There's, we don't want to make it sound like business is bad, business owners are bad. But at the same time, I want everybody to start thinking like an entrepreneur. I want you to know what you bring to the table. I want you to know the unique skill set, um, the unique attributes, the unique things that you bring to the table as an employee. And I'm going to encourage you to think like an entrepreneur. Do not be a slave. It's too easy to go out there and find something better or to start your own thing up. And I'm, that's another thing. I want everybody to find ways. Even if it's on a part-time basis, I want you to find a way to turn a profit. Turn pennies into nickels. Turn pennies into dimes. There are ways to do it. I promise you. Let's start thinking like entrepreneurs because in the next 10 to 15 to 20 years in this country, in this world, there are going to be two types of people. The people that stand on the side of the cash register that opens and the people that stand on the side of the cash register that hand the money over. Decide which one of those you want to be. The Houston media is like a fucking embarrassment. You ever watch these people? Now, look, there are exceptions. There are people that I used to work with years ago when I was in the PR game, and I'm not going back into the PR business unless somebody's got a really good offer. There are exceptions. There are people in the Houston media that are good folks. But overall, um, we need to flush the toilet, basically. Uh, <laughs> look, if you watch Channel 13 or Fox 26, I, I need, uh, particularly the Fox 26 morning show or Channel 13 all day, I am not going to be an employee there. I know they keep leading you to believe that, just like I was going to be an Astros employee and a Texans employee for about 15 years now or whatever. It's been. You are being misled. These are the last people on planet Earth <laughs> that I would want to have as co-workers. Can you imagine one day of me working with, 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 with Art Rescon? If that man had brains, he'd be dangerous. And that fruitcake, that fruitcake. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not even going to mention I don't need to call out names. Let's just say that they're an embarrassment. And they keep leading these people in this town. If you don't believe it, they're out, they, they broadcast online. Watch them. Now, of course, they're going to clean up their act. Once this goes online, they're going to clean up their act for about three or four days. They are obsessed with the John Tyler situation. There is no other explanation. They are obsessed. And they are so far away from the 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 the, the idea of journalism that when our founding fathers sat down and wrote and gave them the freedom that they have, they're so far away from, from that. People, people bitch and moan about the, 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 the gun, the, you know, the gun issue, the second amendment issue, right? There are people, on, especially on the left that feel like, you know, we're letting too many people have handguns. And maybe that's true. Maybe we, we, maybe we don't need people running around with assault rifles and shit. But <laughs> there's a more dangerous affront. The freedom of the press is a dirty, dark secret that we don't want to talk about in this country because we're scared of them. They wield too much power. But there's going to be those of us that rise up and say, we're not putting up with your bullshit. 
you're never going to be my co-worker. And if you want to know how much it costs to sit down and interview me, you can look at my blog. I have interview rates on my blog. You better hope I write a book or star in a movie or television show where I have to do interviews as part of my contract because otherwise there's not one of you that will ever interview me. And I'm speaking to the ones I like and I'm speaking to the ones I don't like. Find something else to be obsessed with until I write a book, I'm in a movie, or I'm on a television show. I'm not running for public office. I don't want to run for dog catcher. I'll let you know if that changes. Man, I went out to the L.A. Dodgers game. There is something that is so... I remember years ago, L.A. is a place I like to go every once in a while when I get a couple bucks in my pocket and I can you know, go out there for a week or so or a few days. And what's ironic about Los Angeles is in the 90s, I lived in San Diego for two or three years. And I've always been a diehard Houstonian. I love this. I've always loved this city. In fact, um, when you walked into my apartment in San Diego, California in the 90s, you would open up the front, the door of the apartment, and the door would open up to a wall. And on that wall was a was a framed photograph of downtown Houston, Texas. I mean, I always loved this city, um, and always will. And I don't, I don't know that I'm going to be here forever. I don't know that this is where I'm going to stay. I remember years ago. Well, the reason I brought San Diego up is because when I lived in San Diego, it's ironic. This was in the 90s, early, or well, it was mid-90s. People would come into town, and I always hated L.A. Or, uh, hate may be a strong word, but, you know, it's like, oh, L.A. Because everybody, want, when they come into town, they visit. They want to go see something in Los Angeles, you know. It's like, oh, we got to go to L.A. Ooh. And, you know, I, I just never, for whatever reason, the L.A. thing never... But that has changed in the recent years to where L.A. is a place I go and this burden, this heaviness I feel has lifted off me. I feel alive in that city. I feel free in that city. And I could be living, I could be staying for a week in a freaking hotel that many of you listening to my voice tonight would never find, would not let yourself stay in under any circumstances. I would stay in freaking Compton. I would stay in Englewood and do frequently, it seems like. And I am, when I'm in that town, I am so happy. Like, like something's been lifted off my shoulders. Like a darkness has been lifted off me. And I was thinking about this, and we'll get to the Dodgers game in a minute, but I, what I was thinking about this, why is this? What is this? I was walking down the street in, in Englewood, California, and I was thinking, what is it about this? And I figured it out. I realized I'm not angry here. I'm not angry here. The things that I felt like didn't work like they should have at home in Houston. I'm not angry there. I, in a sense, I'm free. Now, the freedom, I, in a sense, I'm free. And I love that town. That's where I go. Now, maybe maybe New York City would be the same. I've never been there. Maybe somewhere else would be the same. But L.A. is a town that if I had unlimited resources right now, that's where I'd be, I think. Now, I may meet, I'm, the princesses and I may get together, and that may all change. I'm just telling John as a single guy right now, I love the place. And Dodger Stadium. Oh my gosh. Wherever you're listening to my voice tonight, if you go out to California, go to this ballpark. This is an old, you know, if you compare it to some of the newer ballparks in terms of, you know, how wonderful it 
looks or, or you know you know what I'm talking about how they're building these things more grandiose all the time they're spending more money Dodger Stadium really isn't like that it's sort of an old uh, there, no frills basically type ballpark but you, but it's so historic where it's, it sits up on this sort of like you go up this hill to get there so you're kind of up on a hilltop and it, the weather's always friggin perfect and the fans there have always been incredible to to me they're always wonderful always if I if I lived out there and I had the freaking resources my rear end would be in one of those seats as, as often as possible as often as possible if I lived in LA as often as possible now I was shocked one time I went out there recently or within the last few years and I, I and the Dodgers weren't in town so I went to an Angels game and I was always like well the Angels you know I was shocked the Angels are that's a fantastic place too and a good experience but I think I'm always going to be a you know, I grew up a National League guy. I grew up a Houston Astros fan. And we had to flush them down the toilet. I don't know what happened to them. But um, I grew up a National League guy. And so, you know, and, I, and not only that, I, I grew, I've lived in California. I, I lived in Huntington Beach. I lived in Barstow. I lived in San Diego. I used to go see Astros games at, Pod, at at the old Jack Murphy, Jack Murphy Stadium. So California is kind of like my second home, and Houston doesn't get the sh their shit together. It's going to be my first home. <laughs> but we'll always ask the princess. But I chose the Dodgers game not because I don't like the fans here. I've always had a good time at Minute Maid Park, and um, it's just the organization sucks. The organization sucks. And uh, the fans here are wonderful, and they've always been nice to me. They've always treated me well. Um, in the last, you know, several years, every time I've gone, I've been in a, in a Dodgers shirt. Or, and, and I don't, I decided to stop doing that so much because I don't want them to misinterpret that as me, you know, saying F you to them. Because that's not what's happening. There is an FU going on, but it isn't towards the fans or the people of this city. It's it's towards a bunch of no count rich people that don't don't know their ass from a hole in the ground, don't know what they're pissing on. Go Dodgers, right? Absolutely. So I was flipping channels during the last football season. Those of you who know me well know that basically the only thing I watch on television is I'll watch an occasional movie, but I mean, the only thing I watch as far as television programming is the news and sports. These dramas and comedies and stuff that they, they make for television, generally I don't, I don't watch them. Um, but I was flipping channel, or I was watching a football game, and they did a commercial for this show, Supergirl. And <laughs> they, they were showing this scene of Supergirl um, in her office, hair ponytail, little glasses on, and I was like, oh my God, that is Supergirl. <laughs> that is, what is this? What is this programming? They have made an act, they have made a show called Supergirl, and that actually is Supergirl. This is the most amazing television programming since, uh, since I don't know. I mean, this is the most amazing thing. So I tuned in, and she's really become an archetype for the princess, the sweetheart, the angel. She fights for justice and good. She fights against the demons, the devils, the assholes, the Satanists. She's really a good princess. And um, 
I really had this struggle for a while because, uh, you know, the girl that plays Supergirl is a fantastic actress, by the way. She plays that. She plays the two parts of that character, you know, the Supergirl part and the part in the office. Fantastic. And, I mean, they're two different... They're the same person, but they're two sort of different characters. She does that very well. But... Uh, I want you to watch this program. They just ended up... They just did... If you're on Xfinity or Comcast or... I don't know what AT&T or any of the other cable companies do, but if you can watch, go back and watch this. And if, especially if you're a fan of my blog or my podcast, you'll want to check this out. <laughs> they're doing a good job, and I know they're going to get renewed. CBS would make a huge mistake not to, with some of the shit that's, that's on TV these days. If they don't renew that, then there's no hope for any of us. Um... Folks, I want to help you. Do you believe that? Hold on a minute. Let me take another drink out of my margarita. I want to help you. I'm a, I'm a helpful person. I don't want to help you. You guys have noticed that I'm up to 280,000 followers on my Twitter account. And that really, that number sometimes feels like it's low compared to how many people the impact I mean I listen I was a PR guy for years all right I would have loved to have been able to do what I can do now which is basically sit in front of my television watching watching national TV write a tweet hit publish or whatever the button says and actually watch these people react nationally, locally, they're all looking at it. They can tell you they're not, but they're all looking at it. I want to help you. See, I, I'm a helpful person. Did I tell you that already? I want to help you. The way that I want to help you is this. If you are in the Houston, Texas area immediately and um, would like to see two retweets from your corporate or company Twitter account immediately on my Twitter account John Tyler tweets at John Tyler tweets I want you to check it out there's nothing else like it absolutely nothing else like it oh yeah there's something else like it send me the link I want to see it there's nothing else like it I want your company on there because I believe in you why do I believe in you because you're a leader not a boss I don't want bosses bosses find somebody else to fuck with. I want to talk to some leaders. Do I have any leaders out there? Good. Two retweets a week from your corporate Twitter account. And all you have to do, oh, there's somebody standing outside my window. These are some really freaky people, man. I love them. I love the people that live in these apartments, but the ones that stand outside my window are really weird. All you have to do is bring me on as an employee. Oh, he wants the world. He wants us to pay him so much money. Hold on a minute. I'm not asking for a lot of money. I'm asking for a fair wage. Well, we don't, what, what do you mean by fair wage? I don't understand fair wage. If somebody came into you that wanted to work and do a specific job. I don't need a boss's job. I don't want to be a boss. Remember, the bosses are the people that act important and go make decisions right before everything fucks up at work. I don't want a boss's job. I'll do, I'll do a bottom of the rung job. I'll sweep your floors. My last job, you know what I was doing? I was checking people in at a hotel. I loved it. Checking people in, checking people out, running pillow, extra pillowcases up to the uh, pillows up to the room when they needed them. I loved it. But we couldn't get the schedule right. That's where y'all are struggling, isn't it? Leaders, I'm talking to my leaders. You're struggling, aren't you? We're worried about what the bottom feeders are thinking, aren't we? One of my favorite leadership or management quotes or statements was that um, 
that we leaders, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't worry about the opinions of sheep. They don't like the idea. They can move on down the road. We're going to get on board with the vision. We're going to grow the brand. That's what you and I are going to do. We're leaders. So, you don't have to pay me a lot of money. You should. You damn well know I'm worth it. But my money is going to... I'm going to have another income stream while I work from you, work for you, and that's, and you're not going to interfere with that. But here's what I ask, or here's what I offer. Every week that I come in, you obviously give people days off, right? Every week that I come in, and I don't work on Friday and Saturday. In other words, my days off are Friday and Saturday. Every week that this is the case, your company, your corporate headquarters will get two retweets, one on each day. So you'll get one on Friday, you'll get one on Saturday. If you can't do it for some reason for another week, I still want the job. That's fine as long as your company is, is a good company that believes in honest and fair scheduling for all employees. If you can't do it every week, that's fine. We'll, we'll give the retweets a, a rest for a week, and then the next week when I'm off Friday and Saturday on those days. I bring something extra to the table. I want to I wanna offer that to you. You're such a good leader. Not a boss. Bosses suck. Bosses are worthless. I've had it up to here with fucking bosses. God if somebody called me a boss, I'd fucking run and hide. Stick my head under a pillow and weep. I don't want to be a boss. Bosses are the people that run off and with clipboards. And, you know, they, they run off, they go have a meeting, and then something fucks up at, at work. I don't, look, I don't want any more bosses. I'm ready for leaders. Are you a leader? All I ask is, you can have me sweeping the floors. You can have me leading a team of 100. I don't care. This is what I care about. Every Friday and Saturday that I have off, you're going to get a retweet on your corporate from your corporate Twitter account on my Twitter account. It'll also go on my Facebook. Trust me, a lot of fucking people look at it, and I won't say fuck at work. I'm sorry. That's not what the Lord wanted me to say. Oh, speaking of the Lord, did I tell you guys the last time about how people knocking on my doors at the apartments? Tamales and Jesus, man. Tamales and Jesus. Think tamales and Jesus. Yesterday, I had a wonderful pastor. His name's Angel. That's the only word I understand, Angel. He was an angel, a wonderful angel. He laid hands on me, prayed to the Lord Jesus, had his interpreter with him, spoke wonderful English, wonderful woman, and it was just wonderful. He laid hands on me and was... I wanted to lift up my hands and start praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Let him know, I'm with you. I'm on your side, brother. I may not make all the decisions that you want me to make. It's tough. It's tough balancing. You know, knowing that many of the people that have followed me for years are the church folk. Because remember, this all started. This all started while I was in church two or three times a week. Remember that? Whenever I would never miss a church service. and I feel obligated to those people. I feel obligated to God, believe it or not. And I know some of y'all think, oh, he's backslidden. God doesn't think that. No, there's things that probably God would ask me not to do or would like me to do. But I got news for you. No matter how pious you think you are today, no matter how right with God you think you are today, your righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God, and so is mine. So I'm going to have another margarita and think about the filthy rags. Mm -mm. We don't think about filthy rags, we think about our righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm going to think that all day long. But anyway, the point I want to make is I want to say thank you to Angel and his wonderful woman that came over and laid hands on me and prayed. Just a wonderful man. I want to encourage everybody just to keep going to church, keep doing what your pastor says. If he says don't drink margaritas, I don't want you drinking margaritas. If he says don't say fuck, do not say fuck. 
I want you doing what your pastor says. I'm not your spiritual leader. I'm just John, the silly guy on the internet. You get two retweets every week that I come into work and I don't work on Friday and Saturday. Corporate. Why do you do that, John? Because I want corporate to be involved. That's what the problem is, isn't it? We let the bottom feeders make the decisions and if corporate doesn't feel they're losing anything or, or gaining anything, then they don't have anything to gain. You do have something to gain, corporate. I'm talking to you, corporate. I'm talking to you, leader. I'm a leader. I'm talking to you, leader. Two, re two retweets a week, every week, that the schedule's correct. Man, L.A. Dodgers was such a freaking success. I mean, it is time for Dodgers baseball. We even had some wonderful woman from the bold and the beautiful singing the national anthem. She was so wonderful. I want to send a thank you out to her. And it's just been wonderful. Uh, but my heart screams L.A. I'm going to be honest with you. My heart screams L.A. But I also recognize that there are people that may want to experience that experience. And I mentioned Milwaukee or St. Louis. But how about you, Detroit? How about you, Detroit? I think you're a fantastic city. I think you're a fantastic city, Detroit. I'd love to see the Tigers play. How about you, Cincinnati? Grew up watching the Reds play the Astros. I'd love to see the ballpark. Love to. How about you, Yankees? I said just a couple rows over when Andy Pettit knocked that home run. His only home run in his career came out in the stands just 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 a little bit over here you know just a little bit over here I was there how about you Yankees I was there I was there when uh, when Roger Clements pitched I was there a minute mate I know you'd be a wonderful place for me to come out there's a lot of history in that ballpark how about you Boston you ready huh what you got, Boston? You ready? I want to see some leaders rise up in Boston. I sense that inside of me right now. Hold on, I want to speak to Boston, Massachusetts. I want to see some leaders rise up in Boston and be the leaders that you're supposed to be. I'm speaking to somebody in Boston. <laughs> Sound like a TV preacher, don't I? I'm speaking to somebody in Boston right now. I want you to rise up and be the leader you're supposed to be. You've been a boss for too friggin' long. It's your time to rise up. It's your time to be a leader. How about you, Kansas City? You had a pretty big, pretty good ball club last year. I'd love to see you. Royal blue. Oh, I could, I, I could find some royal blue out here. I could find some royal blue to put on. How about you guys? What's up, San Diego? You remember? I had a little apartment on Claremont Drive. You ready? I lived at Claremont Drive for two and a half years. Loved it. Loved it. Loved that old Jack Murphy Stadium. Watch Craig Biggio out there. You ready? You guys need that fucking chicken. That little chicken dances around on that on the oh, whatever happened to that thing. I love that little chicken. I need my people to listen to my voice to tell me where I'm going next. I need my princess to tell me where I'm going next. Princess, I need you to tell me where I'm going next. Supergirl's an archetype. She'll tell me. She'll tell me where I'm going next. Am I going? Am I going to the Anaheim Angels? Or am I going to the Kansas City Chiefs? Or am I going to the New York Yankees? Or am I going to the Colorado Rockies? How about you, Colorado? You herb-smoking warriors? Am I coming out there to you guys? I got free room and board out there. Oh, they may make me sleep outside. <laughs> My family, I love them. They're weird. They are weird, but I love them. They are weird. But I love them. I haven't talked to Jennifer in so long. How you doing, Jennifer? You ready for a Colorado Rockies game? Well, get in contact with me. Jennifer's not weird. She's just strange. I'm kidding, Jennifer. You know I'm kidding. 
I want to send a special congratulations out to Gregory's. Gregory's one of my brothers. I'm going to send a con special congratulations out to my br my brother Gregory's son. He got his he got his white belt this morning. He's ready to kick ass and take names. He's a real warrior, a real warrior. How's Al Dill doing? Al Dill was wonderful. Al Dill was my stepdad when I lived in Huntington Beach, California. Went out to a Los Angeles Dodgers game. They lost to the Houston Astros. Those were the days where you could you could support the Astros and still look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. I just want to say hello to all my fans. I don't I know I don't have any fans, maybe three of you, maybe six of you. But I want to say hello to everybody that listens to this thing. Supergirl, I'm looking at you. You look so pretty in that picture. You look like the princess. Princess, you're wonderful. And we're going to be together forever. Because you're so beautiful, it makes me stupid. We'll see y'all soon. But I need to know where I'm going. I need to know where I'm going. What's my next public appearance? Let me know. Here's a secret message for you. Backward message. All right? Y'all have a good night.